Hey, what's up guys, Sham here and in this video we're going to build an image classifier that will be able to recognize and classify handwritten digits between 0 and 9. This is more famously called the MNIST dataset problem which has been extensively researched in the machine learning world. The input data is going to consist of grayscale images represented by 28 by 28 pixel matrix where each pixel value is an unsigned 8-bit integer in the range 0 to 255. The MNIST dataset comes preloaded in Keras, so you don't have to worry about downloading the dataset or do any pre-processing. We get the training data and the testing data along with the corresponding labels by calling the load data method. Models and layers are the building blocks of Keras and they help you construct your deep neural networks. Let's create a sequential model and start adding layers. We are going to build a two-layer neural network. The first layer has 512 nodes. It uses the activation function rectify a linear unit and it has an input shape 784 dimensional vector. Activation functions are the heart of the deep neural network. Without an activation function, you will only be able to fit linear models to your data. Data can have very complex relationships and you might have to fit nonlinear functions. Rectify a linear unit is one of the activation functions and softmax being the other. The output layer has 10 nodes which uses softmax as the activation function. Next, we compile our network by providing three key parameters, the optimizer, the loss function and the metrics that we will monitor. There are different kinds of loss functions like mean squared error, binary cross entropy and categorical cross entropy. Since we are dealing with a multi-class classification problem, we are going to use the categorical cross entropy. What this effectively does is it computes the difference between the actual output and the output predicted by the model which in turn is the error in the prediction. This is given as a feedback to the optimizer which in turn comes up with better model in each and every iteration. Let's pre-process our data slightly by flattening out the 28 by 28 pixel matrix to a 784 dimension vector and also normalize it so that it scaled to the interval 0 to 1. The next step is to create a one-hot vector of the output labels. To do this, we import two categorical from keras.utils. Consider the 10 different classes corresponding to each digit. A one-hot vector representation for a given class is a vector whose dimension is equal to the number of classes, in this case 10, and every value in the vector is 0, except the index that belongs to that particular class whose value will be 1. In this case, it's the last index. Similarly, for class 4, it will look something like this. Let's call the fit method to train the model on the data set which takes in four parameters the training images, the training labels, the epochs and the batch size. Epochs is the number of times you iterate over the entire data set. It's always a good practice to take random batches of training data and train your model. Hence we provide the batch size. Then we get the test loss and test accuracy by evaluating our model. Let's go and run this Python script. I'm first going to activate the TensorFlow virtual environment. You can observe that the error is slowly decreasing and the accuracy is increasing. There were many things going on in this video that you might have no clue about. We will explore those concepts in future videos. Nevertheless, you have built your image classifier. 